Hey everyone, I'm going to demo some of the new functionality that two new features in Propeller offers. That's support for tin surfaces and composite builder. So the first thing we need to do is create a site. So now we have a fresh site, totally empty in Propeller. And you can see we're taken to the base map. And we know that one, because we're looking at a map without any survey data, but also we have base map at the top. So that's the data set that we're viewing, you could say. Let's say you haven't had a chance to fly the site yet, but there's a particular pile on site that the owner told you about that you really need to know the quantity of as quickly as possible. And maybe your drone pilot's not available until next week. Uh, so you send your surveyor out, your grade setter out, you know, they set up their GPS equipment and they do a hand topo of that particular pile. Uh, and they, uh, they send you that surface either as an SPJ file, if they're on triple rovers, it might be some other file if they're on top on rovers, you kind of do the work to convert that over to a surface or, you know, ideally they can just kind of export the surface straight off the rover. Um, and then you want to bring that into Propeller for sharing purposes, for markup purposes, uh, even to pull your own measurements on their hand topo. What you would do is you come to the upload button and then surveys and then tin surface. And you can drop that surface file straight in here. So I have a rover survey and I don't want to hide it from the survey picker and we'll, we'll leave that one for now. So I'll click submit. We'll wait for this to load in. Cool. Click done. Now you can actually see in the survey picker, we have a new survey. So I'm going to load up that rover survey. And here we go. Obviously, we don't have an ortho photo with a rover topo, but we do have terrain. So we can see that's nice and elevated now. And we can pull a measurement on this pile. So let's do a cut fill. Could have done a stockpile measurement, but we'll go. So it's going to show us fill, but we can invert that. Let me show this cut. So about 3,800 cubic yards in this pile. I'm going to jump over to another site where we have a couple drone surveys. So that guy, and let's say we had a chance to fly it 21st of September. Um, so we have our drone survey and our rover survey. Let's meld the two. Let's kind of create a Frankenstein topo of your rover survey and your drone survey. To do that, we're going to create a composite. Oh, obviously I had the date incorrect there, but you get the idea. Um, we'll take that 21 September survey and our rover survey and we're going to merge those two together. So now we have three total data sets that we've talked about. We have this composite that we just made, 
which is a combination of the photogrammetry survey and the rover survey. We have the rover survey by itself. If we just wanted to view that on top of the base map, and we have just our photogrammetry data set if we just wanted to view that. Uh, but now you can see the different components of this composite. We have the rover survey and we have our photogrammetry survey. Now, obviously these two overlap in this area in particular. Which survey is on top? You can actually go to this configure tab and right now we have our rover survey on top which might be what we want, it might not be what we want. Maybe the rover survey is older um, as it was in this example, and the drone survey kind of supersedes the rover survey. So the drone survey terrain should be on top of the rover survey terrain, or you could have it vice versa. And you click save, and in this case, it's just gonna invert those terrain layers. So there we go. Now our drone survey is on top of the rover survey. Let's say on our photogrammetry survey that is one component of our composite. Uh, we overflew, we captured a little bit too much and just to prevent people from making measurements outside the area that we care about or for whatever other reason, uh, we just wanna crop that survey. So. In the three dot menu, you go crop. And then I'm just gonna trace out the boundary that I want to crop to. Then click save. So just wanted to jump to a different site real quick, just as an aside for the crop functionality. Crop functionality can make a lot of sense when you are when you overflew an area and you wanna trim it down a bit, that makes perfect sense. I think that it'll also be used quite a bit in these applications. So let's say you have two photogrammetry data sets that are side by side. You had to fly them separately, you had to upload them separately, but you build the composite to meld them together. The first thing is in the past, it was kind of difficult to know which survey was on top. It was always the most recent was what Propeller would default you to. So it's much easier in this new composite builder to tell which is on top. You just go to the configure and if you wanted flight two, which is this one on the left on top, you would drag this one up and then click save. But in this case, we have a little bit of a nasty seam here. So presumably making measurements over this area, pulling volumes in this area, not quite as nice. So flight one is this right side. I'm gonna go ahead and crop it right here. So crop partial survey to clean up that seam a little bit, make the edge a little bit nicer. So I'll just come here, then I'm just gonna come straight across. And you can note if you already made your crop on your original survey, like on the flight one data set, the individual flight one data set, um, then when you merge flight one into a composite, it'll bring that crop with it. So you wouldn't have to do this on the composite survey like I'm doing now. Cool, so now we just have a much nicer seam that goes between the two and will probably lead to much better measurements. Now to demo terrain cleanups, I am going to clean up this pile that we had the rover topo on um, that also showed up in the drone survey. So this is obviously raised up. Let's just pull a quick cross section so we can see what it looks like. Just one line that represents the composite and that composite happens to be the merged version of the drone topo and the rover survey and in this case we're actually just looking at the drone survey because the drone survey is on top of the rover survey um, we could add in the individual components if we wanted to they're just going to show kind of the same thing so we'll add in the rover survey and then add in the drone topo it's not going to do much they're all going to be pretty much the same line
Yep. Cool. So I'm going to apply a terrain cleanup here. Clean up. I'm going to flatten this pile on the composite survey, which actually is some new functionality. So once this re-renders, we should have a nice flat surface. Which we do, that looks good. So now, there's where that terrain cleanup lives. Don't really need to see the boundary. I'm gonna pull that same cross-section measurement over the top. I should have a pretty straight line here for the composite, because that's the one I flattened. And now if I add in those other ones, let's just add in the rover topo to see how that compares. There we go. So the blue line is where the rover topo captured, and then the yellow is the composite. Composite is flat because we applied that terrain cleanup. One other interesting feature that I wanted to show off is the filter by map view. So you'll notice I'm on my composite survey and there's this filter called map view. We also have the same filter actually in the survey explorer right here. So I can turn this on filter by map view. Um, I'm gonna jump to another data set just so I can kind of isolate the rover survey. But for now, just kind of keep in mind if you're looking at various surveys, uh, whether it's an individual data set or a composite data set. So for this case, 21 September 2022 and the rover survey, we're kind of looking at both. Both are merged into this 21 September 2022 composite. These two data sets are not going to appear in the Survey Explorer. The Survey Explorer are data sets that are not currently in view, not currently a part of the data set that you're viewing. So for this demo, I'm just going to jump to a different one. I'm going to jump to October 27th. And we should be able to see that October 27th is no longer in the Survey Explorer because that's the one we're viewing. So that's good. So now within the Survey Explorer, I have the filter button and I'm highlighted on map view. Map view is ticked. So I'm filtering by map view. And we know the Rover Survey is right. Hopefully this should come up right there in that little blue rectangle. So I'm gonna to go to the top right of the site and put this rover survey out of view. So you'll see it disappear in just a second. There we go, it's out of view. And it just dropped off from the Survey Explorer. So all of these data sets cover the area that I'm viewing on the screen. If you have a lot of data sets of different areas, you know, not everyone flies the exact same thing every single time. Um, this filter by map view can be really helpful to determine what different data sets cover what different areas. And to help with that, we did add um, this kind of like, like the bounding box where it highlights in that light blue color uh, to further show where the surveys actually cover. One other thing I wanted to highlight is the beloved timeline tool. Uh, down here at the bottom. So little bug at the moment where the orthophoto is disappearing, but that's gonna be fixed soon. Um, in the past, there's really been no way to control the dates that appear down here. Um, what it is, is it, any survey that has an orthophoto is gonna appear down here. So you'll see right now we have two for September 21st, then October, December. So these two for September 21st, if I hit the drop down here, we'll see we have two surveys one is our regular photogrammetry survey, and then the other one is the composite that we've been working with this whole time. Both have orthophotos, and both, so therefore both are gonna appear in the timeline. Uh, you'll notice the rover survey doesn't have an orthophoto with it, so it's not gonna appear in the timeline. Uh, but this is a little bit annoying, right? Sliding between the same orthophoto, uh, because we have, you know, these two are gonna have the same picture with them, so why are we, both, why are we putting them both on the timeline? There's certain situations where you would want both on the timeline, but now we've given users an option to hide some things on the timeline. So all you would do 
is come to the survey picker and let's say we just wanted to show the ortho photo associated with the composite survey from the 21st of September. I could come here and say hide survey. And now that that one's hidden, if I close that and then reopen it, you'll no longer see that 21st of September photogrammetry survey. I would have to actually turn on show hidden in order for that one to appear. Um, so now that that one's hidden, I can open the timeline and now I only have one September 21st, 2022 um, item that appears in the timeline. And that's gonna be the unhidden one, the composite one. Cool. Hopefully